Now to make our bronze muscadine grape wine, we will be using the following. I have three pounds of bronze muscadine grapes. I have four cups of white granulated sugar. This time around, I'm going to be using a Red Star Premier Coot de Splanc wine yeast. Of course, if you don't have it, use whatever you have. Also, this time around, I'm going to be using regular bread yeast. And that's going to act as our yeast nutrient. Going to need several straining bags to hold our grapes. I'm going to need up to one gallon of clean filtered water. I'll need a wide mouth fermenter, something that we can get our straining bags into. I'll need a one gallon or four liter jug, carboy, demijohn, take your pick, so that we can start secondary fermentation in about a week after we start. Transfer here from here. It will be helpful and indeed necessary to have an airlock with bung. I should also point out that the primary fermenter has its own built-in airlock. If it doesn't, you'll need one of these for this. If not, you will definitely need one for your secondary fermenter. It might also be helpful to have a hydrometer with testing tube. It will help us determine not only what our starting gravity is going to be at the beginning, and hopefully what our ending gravity is going to be at the end so that we can determine how much alcohol is in our wine. Also, if any problems that occur, having a hydrometer will help us with some of those. Also, last but certainly not least, everything has got to be cleaned and properly sanitized. So make sure you have available your uh, food, food grade sanitizer of choice, whether it's One Step, Star Sand, or if you're doing it some other method, just make sure that it needs to be done. If you can keep it clean, you can keep it sanitized at the beginning, you'll have fewer problems at the end. And that, my friends, is what I'm going to be using to make this wine. Okay, because these muscadine grapes have seeds in them, and we really don't want to put these in a blender or food processor because they might chop up the seeds, which might cause a little bit of bitterness later on, we want to mash these berry, we want to mash these grapes up so that we can uh, extract a little bit more of the juice. So, couldn't find my potato masher, but I did have one of these. So I'm gonna give this a shot. And let's see what kind of, what kind of job it does. Working small batches at a time. Probably do more than that, but working small batches at a time. We just wanna go in and crush these bad boys up. Get out of there. Both the pastry thing and my hands have been properly cleaned and sanitized as my straining bags have been. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and mash up a number, enough of these so that we can get those into our straining bag. Now, I should point out that I am gonna mash up more than this before I start putting them into the straining bag, but that is going to be my process. Okay, now that we're over the stove, we're gonna go ahead and start bringing some of our water up to a boil. So I'm going to pour in roughly half of the water. Roughly half. Let's start. Go ahead and cover that up. And let's bring that up to a boil. Okay, now that our water has come up to a boil, let's go ahead and drop in a our grapes. Yep. All right, and the second one, now that I've tied it off. Ah. And go ahead and pour in the rest of our grape juice. Now, the reason why we're doing this is simply because we want to kill off any of the wild yeast that was sticking to the skins of the grapes and if you are trying to do this as a natural ferment you can omit this step and move on to the next step but we've got enough water to cover and we still got half a gallon left so we're just going to go ahead and put our cover on and we can just go ahead at this point and turn off the heat now in a small saucepan 
you can pour in a little bit of that remaining water, or I don't know, anywhere from half a cup, three quarters of a cup. You really don't need to be precise. And we want to go ahead and add in a quarter of a teaspoon of our bread yeast. And for some of you, this might be counterintuitive, but we then want to turn on the heat. And we want to let that come to a simmer. And the reason for that is that the bread yeast is going to be acting as our yeast nutrient. And in order for it to do that, the bread yeast has to be dead. And this is how we do it. We simply kill it with heat. All right, now that we've got a, a simmer here, we can go ahead and turn off the heat. Because it has done its job. And we can actually go ahead and add in our now yeast nutrient to be to our grapes. Put our lid back on. And let that come down to near room temperature, or at least where it's warm enough where we can still add in and easily mix our sugar. And then let it come down to room temperature where we can then proceed to add in our regular yeast. Now I've taken the opportunity to add in our, our four cups of sugar, this time with the record button on record. And <laughs> we're gonna go ahead and incorporate it until it's until dissolved. And it's still warm. It could have been done hot or warm. It's entirely up to you. And we're just gonna go ahead and get it all in there, mixed up. Yep. And that is done. Now both the spoon and the measuring and the measuring cup that I'm currently using to hold my 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 grapes were sanitized beforehand, which is something I said prior to hitting the record button. So we add the fruit back in and the rest of the juice. And now we can let it come down to room temperature. It's now time to take that initial hydrometer reading. And it looks like we are coming in at 1.094 on our hydrometer reading. Okay, for this part of the operation, it's now time to transfer our liquid from our pot to our primary fermenter. And having both just sanitized both the, the fermenter and measuring cup, it's now time to get this from here, starting with the straining bags, to here. Now, I would strongly suggest that if you have the sink available to you, that this be done over the kitchen sink. Because sometimes it can be a little bit messy. And let's see. If I can do this without spilling it all over the place. All right. That's not bad. And looking at the measuring measurement on the inside, looks like we're just over, actually we're a little bit over a gallon, but that's with the straining bags included. Remember, we still had some of that water left over, so when we are ready to transfer this from primary and secondary, and we've had an opportunity to remove the straining bags, we can then use the remaining water to bring our level back up to at least one gallon. But that having been said, what we still have now is just grape juice, sweetened grape juice. But in order to turn this into wine, we have to do the next step. All right, to begin the process of turning our juice into wine, we need to add our yeast. And as with most of my brews, I usually use a quarter of a teaspoon of yeast. If you want to add more, feel free. But I find a quarter of a teaspoon works 
quite well and go ahead and spread it around. Don't just dump it in one spot. And that's all that's required. Put your, put your cap back on. And once again, I should point out that this particular airlock does have, I'm sorry, this particular fermenter does have its own built-in airlock. So I don't need to use a bubbler style airlock like one of these until it's time to use my secondary fermenter, which has a small, smaller opening where this is going to do some good. And that takes care of this. Now, one more very important thing we need to do is that we need to label our creation just so that we don't get it confused later on with some of the other stuff that we might be making. Now then, what we are doing is making, we're making a bronze muscadine wine. We started it on this date and our original gravity reading started in at 1.094. Now then, for the next three days, we wanna go in with a freshly sanitized spoon and give our mixture a good stir incorporate a little bit more oxygen into the mix and squeezing down on some of the straining bags to squeeze out a little bit more of the muscadine grape juice. After that, we don't want to do that anymore. We just want to leave it alone for a total of five to seven days, at which point in time you can go ahead and remove your straining bags and begin the process of transferring your must from the primary fermenter into the secondary fermenter to begin the long secondary fermentation process. Now again, all of these follow-on steps you can find in my playlist, Winemaking Operations, which has separate videos on racking, primary versus secondary, degassing, back sweetening, the whole, the whole nine yards of the process that will lead up to the final tasting video, which will be added to or, or appended to this video 12 months hence. All right. It's now been 12 months. It's now time to see if our bronze muscadine wine was worth the effort of making. We want to find out a couple of things. One, does it smell good when I pop the cork? Does it taste good when I pour that glass and pour it down the throat? Those are the questions we need to answer. All right, a couple of other things. Let's see, born 9 19 uh, AVB came in at 13.56%, and it was back sweetened and pasteurized about a month ago, I think. Um, without further ado, let's, uh, let's find out what we got here. For those of you who are checking clarity, I mean, it's as clear as it's gonna get. Tiny amount of haze, but then again, good enough. Oh, it's one of those corks. Really in there. I actually had to use a little bit of effort to get that down there. All right, cork has been popped. Smells okay. All right. why it is that what with some wines I mean yeah this one did come in at 13 and a half percent but there are some wines when you just take that sniff that's pretty much what you smell right off the bat all right uh, okay so this wine will be one if I decide to keep it that uh, I'll save for those occasions where something a little stronger is required but that having been said let's see if it was worth the effort Oh, the profile shot so you guys can see that I'm actually drinking this stuff. <laughs> you know, the first thing that crossed my mind, it's been, it was back sweetened pretty well. It's actually getting kind of creeping up to that dessert wine status. <laughs> I got to tone it down a little bit. First thing that crossed my mind is that don't know why, but the, uh, the taste of grape Kool-Aid <laughs> came to mind. I don't know if it was just because I just got, it, got home and I'm tired and <laughs> or whatever, but let's just find out for sure.
I mean, damn, that's what it tastes like, grape Kool-Aid. Very interesting. I don't think when I did the uh, regular Muscadine grape wine, the dark ones, that I got that same reaction. Um, it's very sweet. Face it, it's, it's drinkable, <laughs> okay? <laughs> This is one of those bottles of wine that I'm, I'm going to have to save one for my, for my son and his family, uh, for sure. Um, uh, is this something that uh, I'll make again? Probably will, if I can get my hands on some brown muscadine grapes. But for this one, two things. Well, well, I already talked about the sweetness. I already talked about the fact that it's reminiscent of grape Kool-Aid. Uh, uh, the other thing is that when you inhale it, prior to taking your sips, <laughs> you are definitely inhaling that alcohol because it's, it's, it's prominent. You don't really taste the alcohol. You don't taste it at all, uh, but you can certainly smell it, <laughs> that's for sure. All right. I want to try and keep my, my videos short, even though I know some of you fast forwarded just to get to the taste testing portion of it. Um, yeah, uh, definitely it was worthwhile. Uh, if I had to make any changes at all to the recipe, I would probably say none. Um, as far as back sweetening it, I probably would have brought it down a notch uh, to, find, uh, to find that sweet spot. <laughs> uh, but apart from that, yeah. Um, uh, both the regular muscadine grapes and the bronze muscadine grapes. I think I will try the bronze again uh, next time I get my hands on some bronze muscadine grapes, which I've said before, but it's worth repeating. Uh, yeah, this one turned out pretty well. I like wines that have that, that give you uh, full bodied, full flavor that tastes like wine instead of something that's kind of vaguely reminiscent of wine. Uh, th those I like a lot. And this is one of those that definitely fall in that category. Yep, tone down the sweetness and this is definitely a winner. Well, <laughs> that being said, uh, if you like what you see here, please click on that subscribe button, notify button, member button, Patreon button. <laughs> Help support this channel out. And I will continue to do this more often. So if I can get that in there temporarily. I have uh, little plastic uh, vacuum uh, type stoppers uh, that I usually use after I open up a bottle of wine. You know, kind of you just put in the stopper and you suck out the oxygen, you know, to the point until it starts clicking. I've got one of those and that's what I usually end up using. But yeah, definitely. I'll be using that, uh, saving again uh, at least one bottle for my son. October next month, yeah, for my grandson's first uh, one-year birthday party. I have to go to the, fly up to Detroit for that. Um, but yeah, there we go. Bronze Muscadine wine. I'll see you in the next video.